Welcome back to Red Hawk Media. Today, we're beginning our first endeavors with Final Cut Pro. We've been working in iMovie, and now we're ready to take that next step to uh, more professional level editing uh, software. And Final Cut Pro has been that for the industry. Um, as we talked about uh, previously, um, there's a lot of similarities between the video editing software. You're always going to have a timeline area. You're always going to have some kind of a viewer. You can have an import area, and then you usually have some kind of an effects area. And a lot of times, somewhere along the way, you've got toolbars that are worked in there too. Okay, In this case, Final Cut Pro has got its toolbars over on the side. Best way to learn Final Cut Pro, though, is to dive right in. So to begin with, we're going to be starting with a little project. We've taken a lot of different footage for a uh, video shoot for the Evan Riley Band, and we're going to go ahead and put together their first video called Life Dance. So taking a look here. We are going to, uh, we need to get some files to work with, so we got to do some importing. So there's a couple different ways we can do this. Uh, the most standard way is we can go to File, go to Import, and then we can first start a new project. Okay. Once we go to Import, we've got our new project started. You can see the sequence down below here. We're going to go to Files, because that's what we want to import. And I uh, moved my files onto the desktop. Now, if you're working with a server situation or something that's not going to be connected, like a removable media, like a flash drive or external drive or something like that, you want to make sure that you always have the files in the same exact location. If you don't, if they get moved, if the names get changed, that causes problems in Final Cut Pro. Um, so what I did is I, I moved the files I'm going to be working with for this project right to my desktop. Now, if I want, I can go ahead and I can choose a few of these um, clips, and I'm just going to highlight uh, several of them and import them like that. Now, if I want, another way that I can import these is I can go ahead and drag them in. So I find my folder where I've got them located. I can open that up, and of course I can grab the files that I want and then drag those in. So a couple different ways that you can import. Now, I've got some files to work with. I'm all set up with my, uh, my area here. Uh, one thing that you may notice that looks a little bit different on your screen is you may have an effects tab that's up here. Um, that's fine. Um, basically, uh, I like to move the effects down here because a lot of times you're dragging the effects onto the clips and it's a little bit closer. So if you're noticing those differences and you're like, why does my screen look like his? That would be why. Now. There's a lot of information that's in the browser here. If you go over, you can see a lot of different stuff that's in here. You can label these things. You can, uh, if you've got a really huge project, you can, uh, you can name all these, create bins for them, all of that kind of stuff. And that's not necessarily a bad idea at all. If you have multiple camera angles, probably a good way to go. Okay. So for instance, if I want to start a new bin, I can right click over in the space here, and I go to new bin, and this is my um, main camera angle here and I'm gonna go ahead and open that and you can see it creates a little folder it's a little bit different than the clips here and if I want I can go ahead and take these clips and just oop, let me highlight those again and I can take them and move them in there and that's a nice way to kinda keep everything organized then I can drop them down when I wanna see now once you get your clips in um, you wanna start working with them this is your viewer um, this is your viewer, and then this is your canvas area. The viewer is for looking at things up front to decide whether you like it or not. You can mark ins and outs, and we'll talk about all that in just a, in a second here. So let's take a look at our first clip. <clears throat> the photo shoot started off here for the video. They start off actually in a church, and this is a very bored-looking congregation, actually, and they're about ready to like head off on their own little adventure here with the Evan Riley Band. So... We're starting off with this clip, and as we look at it here, we can scrub through it and see what we've got going on here. And if, in fact, we like this clip, we can go ahead and we can use I to mark an in area. That's where the clip will begin when I drag it down. And let's say right here where they're looking especially bored, I go ahead and mark an out area. Now I've got the clip marked. I've got my in, I've got my out, and now I can take the clip and I can drag it down into my timeline. Okay, 
Now, a lot of times you're going to get this, which is a good setting in Final Cut Pro. It's saying that this clip, the settings don't match my project settings. So now it wants to change the sequence settings to match my clip. So if I took this in HD and I don't want to like degrade the value of it or the quality, this would be a good thing to do. So I click yes. I do want to change the sequence settings. And now they all match up. Okay. If you ever want to check your sequence settings to see if, in fact, you are working with the, the quality that you've got, you can always click on your clip. You can go up to Sequent. You can go to Settings. And then in here, it tells you the details. This was shot in 1920 by 1080. It's 1080i. That's like the best that uh, this Final Cut will do. And then the Pixel Aspect Ratio, it's got that all set up here for us, it's saying that it's square. And then it's got the frame rate for you. Okay, so everything's all set up down here. I'm okay with that. And we're good. All right, now, I want to start editing this a little bit. I'm I've got it down in the timeline now. And right now, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to see this clip because I've got the thumbnails going on here. Some clips that you'll drag in, depending on where they're from and what file format are, they won't have that to view. But uh, these clips that you'll be dragging in will. So you'll be able to see the film strip looking uh, sequence here. So now I can take that and I can drag it back here to the very beginning. And uh, I can scrub through it down here. Now sometimes you're going to drag these clips in and they're going to have a red bar that's above them. Okay, That wants you to render the clip. What I would do is do as much as you can scrubbing through, cutting, and all that stuff before you render because you'll find that you're going to be rendering on and off again quite a bit. That's one of the differences in Final Cut. So now let's say for instance um, right at this point here I want to cut that little girl out pointing there because she's pointing at the cameraman actually. So I'm going to cut here. I'm going to grab so I move my playhead to where I want to cut. I'm going to grab my razor blade tool here and I'm going to come over and notice it snaps right to it. It's kind of a handy feature. Okay, and I go ahead and cut. When it's a clip that has audio, it will cut the clip and it will cut the audio all at the same time. If they're separate clips, it won't do that. Okay, I would have to go down and cut the audio. That's a great way to keep everything lined up is when you've got the playhead all set there. Okay, so now I don't want the end of this clip anymore, so I go back to my pointer tool here. I can click on this and I can click delete. And now that clip's out of there. I'm all good. In fact, you know what? I really don't want this audio at all because this is a music video. So I want to get rid of that. But if I click on the audio, it always highlights the video too. So if I hit delete, it's all gone. Okay, I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to lock my video layer so that doesn't move whatsoever. I already got my audio chosen. And now I just delete that out of there. Now we're all good to go. Okay. So those are a couple of the basics to begin with, how to move clips in, importing them, how to view them in the viewer, how to set your in and out points, and then ultimately how to drag your clip onto the timeline. Now I'm going to start working with more clips and building up my project here. Okay. Thank you for joining us today with Red Hawk Media. We'll be back again.